floppy disks. In the 1980s and 90s, they were an inescapable method of storing data. Now they're obsolete. But here, they're being turned into art. Thirty-three-year-old Nick Gentry grew up with floppy disks, stored computer games on them, and swapped them with his friends. Now he uses the plastic diskettes as canvases. Why should anyone just use a plain white canvas? And um, I suppose when I thought that, then I thought that it was kind of like flipping the idea of the subject and kind of building the subject into the work, into the canvas. Before he takes brush and paint in hand, Nick Gentry paints with the diskettes. He sketches outlines of his portraits by arranging the floppy disks according to color. Only then does he glue them on. His nose is kind of like bringing it out in 3D, if you like. So the, the, the highlight is here and the shadow is here. And, um, and then I know underneath the nose, I need a sort of darker area and then maybe something here from the mouth. But it's all about proportions. He needs about 100 floppy disks for one picture. Gentry's art is also an allusion to the rapid development of internet technology. I'm a big technology fan, so I think I'm surrounded by this, and I'm probably in this unique situation where I am kind of savvy with the technology of the day, but also have a, a feeling for the technology of the past, which, you know, I guess people younger than me wouldn't really have any kind of connection to anything like this. Gentry makes 30 to 40 floppy disk pictures a year. They've been shown in Europe and the US and are valued at between 18,000 and 40,000 euros a piece. Private collectors around the world and the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art own works of his. After Gentry graduated from the Central St. Martin's College of Art and Design in London, he posted his paintings on building walls, hoping to be discovered. Eventually, an art dealer from the US noticed him on the internet. Now, he earns his living with his art. His studio is in London's East End, home to both immigrant communities and creative artists. It's vital for me because as a portrait artist, I need to be able to see people's faces, and it's an inspiration, I think. Like, in a city like London, there's so many people from different backgrounds, and, and so I think that, that's, that's only an inspiration to me, really, to, to, to have that right here. Without present-day technology and social networking, Nick Gentry's floppy disk portraits would be unthinkable. That's how people around the world find out about him and send in their floppy disks. Working together with these art admirers is an important part of his art. I'm trying to close the gap between the, you know, the artist and the viewer, and, and often in art you could, there is a gap. You know, when you walk into a gallery, it's like there can be a distance. But what I want to do is try and close it and... and um, just to, to kind of merge the two in a way, to kind of blur that boundary. And just to say, well, what happens if people do want to get involved and have parts of their history in the work? Many contributors send both greetings and information about what's on the discs. But Gentry has never looked at their contents. He wants the information to be a secret, preserved in his artworks. Painting portraits over the diskettes leaves his portraits looking almost robotic, yet human. Nick Gentry describes his work as social art from the obsolete. And he manages to make the development of technology and its influence on people visible.